Hi there, and welcome to Sonic Pi 2, here running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, the purpose of this video is just to take you through an introductory tour of what the interface screen looks like and to whet your appetite as to the sort of thing that you can do using Sonic Pi. When you switch it on and start the program up, you will see that you end up with this screen, which has got two major areas in it. This area here, which is called the workspace area, which is in fact consists of one of eight different screen, work screen areas, which can be used. You can see that one or two of these have already got programs in it. I'm selecting workspace four, which is currently empty. And on the right hand side, there is a log screen, which keeps a record of what's actually happened uh, on the program during the time that it's been operating. And at the moment, it just says 2.0.1, which is the current version, ready. It's waiting for us to do something. Um, along the top of the screen, there are a series of four buttons on the left-hand side and six buttons on the right-hand side, which we'll just run through. <coughs> uh, these buttons on the left-hand side, the first one is the Run button, and if I hover over it, it tells you that it runs the code which is in the current workspace. When we've typed some commands in here and we click on the Run button, then Sonic Pi will interpret them and will produce some sounds, all being well. The Stop button will stop all running code in Sonic Pi um, and uh, we'll just return it to silence waiting for you to uh, do something else. The Save button here will let you um, <coughs> export the text in the current workspace and save it as a text file which you can then reload later on if you want into the workspace by opening the text file, copying its contents and pasting it into the workspace. <coughs> the Record button here um, if you are running some code which generates sounds, then you can record these sounds in a WAV file which you can play back using a separate uh, program at a later date. And so it's possible to record your performances and then play them back later. <clears throat> On the right hand side of the screen, we've got a series of three buttons which have got uh, yellowy orange um, symbols on them and a series of three which have got blue in them. The blue ones Let's look at those first. The Info button simply gives you a screen that displays the current version of Sonic Pi that you're using and it also tells you the website where you can go to download the, um, the program if you've not got it installed in your system, system yet. Although if you update your distribution on Raspberry Pi and then use AppGate Get Install Sonic Pi, it will automatically update uh, the version 1, which you might currently have on your Sonic Pi, to the latest Sonic Pi version 2. But there is also uh, an Apple Mac version which you can download and which works very well. I actually have it running on my Apple Mac here too, and I can actually slide across the Mac version of the program into the area that we're recording here, so that you can see that uh, as well. But back to the Pi. Um, We've also got at the bottom of this section, um, we can find out something about the history of uh, Sonic Pi and also about the contributors who've helped in the development of that and also something about uh, places you can go to find out information about Sonic Pi. There's a Google Groups forum there and uh, there are messages posted on Twitter and there's a Facebook section on Sonic Pi as well. So all useful places to know about. Um, if we go on to the next section, this is one of the big differences compared with Sonic Pi version 1. There is an extensive help section, which when you click on the button opens a, a, an area at the bottom of the screen. This has got various tabs down the left hand side which you can select. Uh, the first one is a tutorial section, and that has got in it 21 different uh, sections. It starts off with a welcome from Sam Aaron, the developer of the program and then you can move straight away on to uh, getting Sonic Pi to do something. And perhaps the easiest thing you can do to that is to use the command play 50, and I can simply copy out of this area and paste that into the workspace area here, and we can actually uh, generate our first Sonic Pi um, sound by playing that. And that plays quite a low note, a note of pitch uh, 50, if I raise it, say, to 72, and we play that again, we'll get a slightly higher pitched note. 
running. And you'll see that on the right hand side in the log area, it tells us now that we've run programs twice. This is the second run, and during that second run, we use the synthesizer called Beep to play a note of value 72. <clears throat> you'll see later on, uh, when you get uh, more into Sonic Pi, that it's also possible to use symbols for notes, which if you're used to using music um, or already, music notation already, will perhaps be easier and more comfortable to use. Uh, and we could put in here, say, play colon C5, and if we run that again, that will actually play the same note because a C5 actually has the MIDI note representation of 72, which Sonic Pi uses internally when it's uh, playing notes. <clears throat> so that's our first little uh, so uh, um, foray into making Sonic Pi do something. But um, there are a whole series of other um, tutorials um, covering all aspects of Sonic Pi's work, which you can use and uh, work through. In the second section, there are some finished examples, and these are coded depending upon the difficulty of the example from uh, an apprentice, um, so very simple example here, which has only got four lines in it. And if I was to copy that and um, paste that into the workspace area here, uh, we could run that as well. And I'm not going to go into detail what this does because there is not time in this uh, quick uh, uh, overview of what the interface looks like, but you can probably get a, a rough idea of what's happening. It shows that there is a loop here of commands, which goes from the beginning of the word loop up to the word end here, and essentially it's going to do these two commands in the middle again and again and again. And this is going to play um, a sample in this case, not a note that's generated electronically, but a sample which has been recorded of um, a percussive bell sound. Uh, the rate command here is going to change how fast it plays this sample, and so if it plays it faster, it will sound at a higher pitch than if it's played at a lower rate. And it's then going to sleep or twiddle its thumbs for a random amount of time between 0 and 2 seconds before going back and playing the next bell again. So if we run that, we can hear that operating. You can hear these different bell-like sounds. Some of them low pitched when we're running at a slow rate, some of them high pitched when we're running at a high rate, and sometimes there's short gaps between them, sometimes there's longer gaps between them. And you can see uh, the actual sounds which are being generated shown in the log file here. And if we click on the stop button, it will actually stop that running, and we've stopped the fourth run, and we can actually uh, scroll back upwards and see what's actually happened in that run as we do so here. Um, <clears throat> OK, um, so this is the help section. Moving further on down that, under the examples section, there's a section labeled synth, and that actually uses different uh, samples when you're playing something. If we get rid of this, and we simply look and see how the synth commands uh, will operate, here is the beep synth uh, here, um, <clears throat> which is the, um, uh, the default synth, which is used by Sonic Pi. Underneath it, it gives you some information about different parameters which can be used by it, which perhaps look a bit daunting to start with. But if you move further down, it actually explains what all of these are. And in the um, tutorials, there are sections on using, for example, the uh, uh, attack, sustain, uh, attack, de delete, uh, sorry, attack, decay, sustain, release, per, um, envelope, shape of a note, which can alter what it's going to sound like as it plays. Let's go back and to just see how we might use something like the beep command uh, to choose our synth, which is done by using this command here. Again, we can use copy and paste, which is very much your friend when you're using Sonic Pi. It saves an awful lot of typing. That's going to set the synthesizer, which we're going to use. And we could then play um, a note um, underneath. Let's play our C5 note again using that synthesizer. And it sounds like that. 
But if we look down this list, we can see that there are other synthesizers we could use. And if we take the last one, which is called Zawa, uh, we can see that that is selected using the use synth Zawa command. So if I just copy Zawa there and replace the word beep here with Zawa and then play that again, you'll hear it sounds very different. A much more electronic sort of sound than the uh, one we had previously. And um, we can also then move on to the next section, which defines some effects which can be used and superimposed on these different commands. Um, we could see, for example, that there's an echo effect there. And if we were to put this in here, we do that by putting the line with FX echo at the beginning there. And we finish uh, the bit we want it to apply to by putting the word end on the end here. And as an aside, you'll notice that this is formatted slightly differently to make it stand out the area of commands or the number of commands which the uh, echo effect is going to apply to, the command in the middle is indented. Now I could do that manually, but this is where if we just scoot over to one of the other buttons up here, the align button, if I click on that, it will automatically indent that command for us. Let's listen to that. And you probably hear there's a, it actually played about twice. There's an echo effect as it went on. Um, this is actually, we'd actually um, see this more if we made that note last for longer. But that's just a very quick introduction as to how the echo effect could be applied to that. Um, and we could perhaps change that to another one, which should apply some reverberation to this. Again, it won't be all that pronounced on this short note, but we'll let's see if we can hear what the effect is. You could hear it takes longer to die away. And if I remove that and play that one more time. Here the note stopped pretty dead. Uh, with the echo, it went on for a bit longer. So that's effects. And if we move on to the last section, we have actually used one of these before, um, and that is that we get um, some pre-recorded sounds which can be used, um, either individual sounds or sounds which can be made to loop. And perhaps this perhaps shows it more clearly. If we look at this sounds for looping, and we move down here, there is one called Loop Our Men. And if we copy that and get rid of all of this stuff up the top, and paste that in again, instead of a synthesized sound, we're actually going to get a recording of some um, percussion playing. And it's a very short loop, but it's possible to change how long it lasts for and to get it uh, looping continuously if you want by adding a few other commands in it. So uh, the message to put across is that Sonic Pi is incredibly versatile. Your imagination is the limit of what you can do with it. And we're really just scraping the surface here in what we've looked at so far. So we've looked at the info window. We've looked at the help window. We've seen how we can have commands in here which we can play by using the run command. Uh, these two buttons here, um, if we click on the size plus, it makes the text in the window bigger. This could be useful if you're displaying this to a large number of people and you want to make the, the commands very clear. Uh, if, on the other hand, you want to have long lines in there and a lot of them showing on the screen at once, you can actually reduce the size of the text like that. And, of course, you can get more screen to work on by simply turning off the help screen when you finish using it. So you could see here that we could get quite a large number of lines in here. And in fact, I think if I move back to a workspace that's actually got a program in it, and here we can perhaps just have a brief preview of some other um, code playing on Sonic Pi. <laughs> gives you uh, an indication of uh, a slightly more sophisticated bass that you can uh, get by putting all of these commands together. But for the moment, let's just stop that playing 
um, and move back um, here to where we were. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the last screen, which is the preference one there, we can see that it's possible to make various changes here. In particular, we can change the um, source of our audio output. On Sonic Pi, sometimes you can get audio going via the HDMI route, particularly if the monitor you're using uh, will accept audio. And if I do that, you may have heard there was a hiss in the background, which shows that my sound has disappeared, because it's now going down the HDMI route, whereas I actually have got an amplifier plugged into the audio output headphone socket. And I'll just switch that back on again there. Uh, the other thing you can do is to uh, adjust the overall volume um, of uh, the sound in Raspberry Pi there um, by putting that up here. And that's the system volume of your Raspberry Pi. And another very useful command is the ability to turn off the output in the log section here, or a lot of it at any rate. Uh, if I turn the preferences off again and we come to play this uh, loop Amen again, you'll notice that when it plays, like that, that uh, it just says starting, our run, and stop at the end. It doesn't show the bit in the middle that it did previously. One other thing, actually, is a consequence of the fact that I changed to this uh, other workspace down here, I think it was uh, number two here, uh, is that this command has reared its ugly head. I'm going to actually copy it and move back to workspace number four. And before the sample amen, I'm going to paste it in here. Notice again, the use of, cost and, of copy and paste. Um, what this does is that if you get a very complex piece of music, it's sometimes convenient to give uh, Sonic Pry a head start and let it do a lot of processing before it actually starts playing. And this is what this rather um, inscrutably com named command set schedule ahead time, uh, which is followed by a number of seconds for which you give Sonic Pi a head start so that it can process before it actually starts playing, which is why there was a gap when I ran uh, the sample loop uh, Amen before. Let's try it again. It's going to take four seconds before it starts to play. There it goes now. Let's stop it. I'm going to set that down to something like 0.25 um, uh, seconds and do that again. And this time it starts playing almost uh, immediately, but you can see. I forget what the default time is. I think it might be, it's either quarter of a second or half a second for um, uh, Sonic Pi and Raspberry Pi. I think it's maybe half a second. So if we set that to there, we could then actually um, obliterate that command again. But that's just why we got that pause there. So we've been through uh, the Sonic Pi interface there. We've seen that there's this workspace which you can use. There are a, a, a large number of them. I've actually got something in most of mine here. Uh, not all of them at the moment. There's some empty ones there. And um, you can fill, uh, have say, eight different programs here and very quickly switch between them by simply switching the workspace which you're using. So I moved, in fact, from there to, uh, I think in this one I've got another piece there. We'll just perhaps have a very brief listen to the beginning of that as it runs. This is some early music. You'll see that sometimes if we don't give it enough time, we can get a warning that Sonic Pi is running slightly behind. We could get rid of that by putting in a set schedule ahead time there. So. That is an introduction to the uh, interface of Sonic Pi. I hope it, it, it whets your appetite tight to go and have a go yourself. And I hope to produce some later videos, which will maybe go through some of these other programs that I've been using and show how you too can use Sonic Pi to great effect. Thank you for listening and watching.